Hello there, and welcome to another video. Today is going to be a wild camp uh, up in the Brecon Beacons. Uh, going to look to camp uh, somewhere new, and we've got probably a four or five mile hike. Temperature wise, it's absolutely freezing. It's not going to be down to freezing by the looks of things overnight tonight, but you never know. I am kind of hoping for a bit of a frost and I've probably overpacked but that's mainly because I've got a few beers to celebrate my 100th subscriber mark doesn't sound like a lot to a lot of people but I started this channel and it was the only aim I gave myself get to 100 subscribers which I've done so end of the year now is a bonus for me so to celebrate with me got the terrible two Nathan and John we're going to uh, find ourselves a nice little uh, area to pitch. Well, we can kind of already see our campsite over in the distance there. So just going to bag ourselves a couple of hills first and then make our way up Garaglass to camp. I will no doubt say hello a few times as we're on the way. But for now, just going to get up to the first summit. Probably get a hat on. So that's the first peak, one trick ticked off, three to go. For me, this is new. I've never ever been in this section of the beacons before. However, I was over there for my last wild camp, if you just see in the clouds. That's near Flinnevan Vach and Flinnevan Vau. So I think it's staying true to form. I was in the clouds last time. And it looks like it's in the clouds again today. Luckily enough, the forecast for us is going to be pretty clear. So I'm praying that we get either a decent sunset tonight or a decent sunrise tomorrow. Here we are coming up on Peak number two. Oh, just a little drop down from here. And then it's the gentle up to the last one. I didn't bring a stone. But as you can see, Absolutely stunning. You can literally see all the way to, well, I mean, east of here you've got the rest of the Beacons range. You've got, you can see how, even though we've got the cloud, the visibility is amazing. You can see, I mean, Brecon and beyond, really. When you look the other way, you probably can't make it out distance is the haze of the Gower. come over the top there just kind of make your own path down really through some absolutely stunning rock formations albeit not the biggest but that's why I picked the spot we have to camp tonight 
uh, because it's basically a lot like that. I found it, I mean this is a little sort of handy tip for anybody, uh, Google Maps, Street View. Uh, it's been walked by the looks of things, uh, the Beacons Way. You could literally follow it all the way. And I got up to the summit there where I found those rock formations. I thought, yeah, I definitely want to camp there. And it's been on my list for absolutely ages. And I thought, seeing as this is my kind of 100 subscriber special, if you want to call it that, I thought, why not? Let's go there. So the guys agreed. So, instead of a, a solo one night out, it turned into a, a three-man party. Hence, the beers and maybe a couple of whiskies. Tell you what, I thought those little rock formations over there were pretty. <laughs> Look at that! It's like being on the moon. Somebody cheated. He went the easy way. Off you want another way. Someone read the map right. <laughs> so here we are. Garra Glass Summit. Highest point of the day. Although I say day. It's only about six miles, I think, altogether. But, as you can see, you've got these two massive cairns at the top. You can't really, uh, you can't really miss this one. But, as we dip over the edge there, we'll get a, we'll get a view of camp. Yeah, camera's probably not going to pick it up, but you can just see there's a little white painted trig point in the distance. It's just literally over the edge of that where we're camping. But I mean, look at this. <laughs> so that's it. Final trig and literally well, take your pick. I'm not sure we're going to get our sunset. Still looking a little bit cloudy over that way. But it's dry. <laughs> and it's supposed to stay dry the whole night. And forecast is for near zero temperatures but pretty much zero wind so i think it's time to find a place to pitch probably got about half hour 45 minutes of daylight left and i think that's in the brew well i think we found it nice bit of flat ground big enough for the three of us to kind of buddy up but mainly look at that As you can see, rocking the Wild Country Spheros Compact One again. 
have got a few little extra toys that I've bought myself just to celebrate 100 subscribers. I'll show you in a bit now. So, like I said, bought myself a couple of new toys. First one is the Thermarest Neoair X Lite. Figured it'd be a good idea considering it's going to be near freezing tonight. And my old sleeping pad has an R value, I think, of 0.5. <coughs> and this is, I think, 4.2. So, yeah, this will easily blitz tonight. So, I'm going to get that up, get the sleeping bag in. So, that's got a bit of time to loft up, chill out, maybe have a cup of tea, or maybe open a beer. So that's the X-Lite in, as you can see still a little bit of room either side and I went for the wide version just for that little bit of extra comfort really, no chance of me rolling off that thing. So in honour of where we are, I thought we'd go with the Brecken Brewing. It ain't the same mountain range, but it's close enough. I'm looking forward to the pair in the van. 6%. So Nathan's just dropped the bombshell, he forgot to bring beers. So I've had to loan him one. Well, I say loan, I'm not getting it back. So he's going to take Fan of I'm going to start with the corn D. Move on to the pair in the van later. For now, I'm going to sit and chill. Enjoy what's left of the light and then give it an hour or so and I think it might be time for a bit of food. So I'm not sure how well you can see me <clears throat> but we've uh, just had a, a nice cup of tea and seeing as it's now dark I thought I'd show you my second little toy I bought. I bought myself a new light. It's the Goal Zero Lighthouse Mini. So just to give you an idea, it goes, you've got a little dial on it, um, you can either have it on one side, or both sides, which is <laughs> more than light, light than you'll ever need at camp. But yeah, first time trying it out in the tent today. Uh, so. We'll see how it stacks up. The battery's supposed to be pretty good on it as well. And it does come with uh, a hook. Don't know if you can see that. But yeah, thought I'd treat myself. I'm pretty happy with it. It's starting to get pretty cold. Uh, time is just gone six o'clock. And already it is. Uh, well, I mean, we are probably touching zero here. Yeah. So, as you can see, uh, just popped into the tent uh, just to warm up a little bit and going to put some food on. So, I think we're going to start with a chicken curry. And I've got, uh, I think it's vanilla or something for, uh, for dessert. So, yeah, going to uh, spend half hour or so in here just warming up a little bit and then uh, go out for a, a little bit of a stroll maybe So one of the best things about these meals is a hot water bottle on a cold night. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, 
use this time to say thank you. Uh, this is uh, a wild camping celebration of a hundred subscribers, like I said earlier. Uh, and same as I said earlier, it doesn't sound like much, but is literally the only target I give myself when I started the channel. Originally, it was just going to be a sort of diary of my coast to coast walk, and I decided, you know what, I really liked the process of filming and, and editing, and, and I thought, yeah, I'll give it a go, make a channel out of it. So, hopefully, more content to come in 2022. Uh, I have got a, a walk planned, I have no idea when for, but I'm going to do uh, the St. Italy's route uh, through South Wales. Uh, so, it starts in uh, Pembrey. Uh, and it finishes in Margam Park, which is literally round the corner from me, my neck of the woods in Port Talbot. Um, so I thought that'd be a nice one to start with because I think it's about 63 miles. So uh, yeah, that's the only sort of big multi day I've got planned for the year. But obviously in between then, there's going to be plenty of hikes, plenty of uh, wild camps, hopefully. And uh, well... I think this particular place is definitely going to get revisited in the summer. But yeah, if you've got any suggestions uh, where I can uh, I can wild camp next, mainly going to be sort of South Wales, Brecon Beacons area, um, just with work and family, I don't get uh, a massive amount of chance to uh, to go that far afield very often. So uh, yeah, if you've got any suggestions, then leave them in the comments and. Uh, I'll try and pick up as many as I can. But yeah, like I said, I just wanted to take the opportunity to, to thank everyone who has subscribed. And if you're watching this and you haven't, uh, it would be greatly appreciated. Hit the subscribe button, hit the uh, the bell button so you get the notifications when I get new videos coming out as well. Because, uh, like I said, I've, uh, I'm gonna try and get as much as I can done in 2022. So years to uh, years to that. For now, it's time to uh, chill out a bit. So I've uh, I've flipped myself round in the tent just so I can have the door open and be a bit more sociable with the guys because they're <laughs> that way rather than that way. So uh, yeah, time to tuck in. I think. Looks a business. Proofs in the pudding, as they say. Not bad. I'd probably say the pasta ones are better, but. On a cold night in Brackham, who's to argue? Right, now that's done. It's time for dessert. Good thing with this, as far as this sort of uh, winter camp it goes, this is just cold water. So, no having to boil or anything, which, if any of you have done this, you know that your gas really does struggle in the cold weather so uh, I think I might have to uh, have a look at I think it's the Coleman Extreme people say that's really good in this kind of weather let's see how this goes so I think that's uh, it for the night tempo now uh, it's, uh, it's not that windy at all if it's like literally two or three mile an hour it's nothing but it is absolutely biting so it's just uh not nice standing around in it uh so i'm gonna sit chill out watch a bit of tv on the phone uh get probably an early-ish night and then uh pray for that elusive sunrise tomorrow till then night night Morning, morning. It is about half seven. 
and the sunrise we were hoping for isn't gonna happen <laughs> unless we get a miracle. Uh, did just have a little bit of a panic. It's, uh, just hear a, a voice coming over asking us if we were going to be here all morning. <laughs> Thought it was a ranger kicking us out, but uh, yeah, it was uh, army. Uh, they're on manoeuvre, so we may be expecting a few guys uh, in the next hour or so. He said. So I think I might have a little bit of a wander, just stretch the legs, and then get back into the tent until it gets a little bit lighter, and then get a bit of tea on, a bit of breakfast. So, I'll speak to you in a bit. So I've been up for about an hour, uh, had a cup of tea. Uh, I've just got another little bit of water on to uh, have some pasta for breakfast, I think, just to, uh, well, carry less weight on the way back. Uh, like I said earlier, unfortunately we've not got the sunrise, but this spot is definitely one to uh, to pick out for coming back to. I think this is going in probably at number one. Uh, I think we'll probably hang about here for maybe another half hour or so, just to have a bit of food and then start parking up, make our way uh, back over Gara Glass. Uh, we're going to follow the actual route of the Beacons Way on the way back, so we haven't got to go up and down uh, the uh, the extra hills, just because, what's the point? In this weather, <laughs> you can't see anything. <laughs> so I've just come for a little bit of a stroll, just to check out what's around. Not that you can see very far, but even in this, you can tell that there's some pretty stunning rock formations up here so uh, I think this like I've said this is definitely going to be a place to revisit there's just so many little places that you could pitch a tent up here so uh, I think going to start parking up get everything squared away and head back to the car So that's everything packed up, now we've just got to chuck it in the bag, other than a little bit of <coughs> rubbish which I've kept separate, although I say rubbish, that's it, that's the great thing with these adventure food pouches, I've had three meals and a few cups of tea and things and literally chuck all the rubbish in there, seal it up, that's a great bin bag. So. Let's finish parking. So there you go, by the magic of cinema, all packed away. You know the score, leave no trace. Same as the guys. Sean's already packed up, Nathan's just finishing off now. So, other than the flat grass, no one knows who we are. Apart from the army who spoke to us earlier. But they probably won't tell anybody.
this bag is so much lighter than it was yesterday. So we're back at the top of Garaglass. Just come past the two biggest canes I've ever seen. So like I said earlier, we're gonna follow the route back along the beacon's way back to the car and well make our way through this clag. I'm not sure how low this stuff goes, but we might have this all the way back to the car. We'll see. But if it does clear up, I'll give you a shout. So we dropped down out of the clag. This is uh, the lowest point pretty much on the way back to the car. So thought I'd take the chance while it's clear to uh, say thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I, uh, I have to say it's definitely up there as a camping spot for me. So. Uh, yeah, two miles or so back to the car, so hopefully make light work of it, and I shall see you on the next one. Say bye everyone.